Ubi Doo, it's everyone's favorite boomer and vintage lens enthusiast, and today we're going to review some uh, old timey uh, uh, tele zooms. Uh, I recently got this lens, the SMC Pentax Zoom, one to four, forty-five to one twenty-five, and there's a. Uh, I did a photographic study of it, and this is a fine lens. You get it for like a. Around a hundred bucks in excellent condition. It's push pull. It's well damped. Has very little zoom creep. So it's a keeper. Even though it's a 45 to 125, it's very useful ratio on a crop sensor camera. Now, previously I bought this lens, which is the uh, SMC Pentax M Zoom 1 to 4, 75 to 150. Uh, in excellent condition. I scuffed that up myself. This one has a built-in lens hood. And it's the same price. Here, let's look at this for a second. Let's take this off this camera. It's about the same height. Well, actually, uh, let's go this way. Uh, this is a little longer, right? Even though it's shorter in focal lens, it's a little longer. And you can see it's a little uh, thicker. Uh, they're about the same high, uh, weight, pretty close. All these push pulls suffer from zoom creep. Uh, but let's put this back on this camera real quick. What's good about these old time Pentax is uh, once you get somewhere, they stay there. And then you could focus without, you know, changing uh, the focal length. Same thing with this one. Uh, it goes somewhere. This has a lot less uh, markings, you notice. This focuses down to four feet. This focuses down to five feet. That's a little bogus. I think that this one, there's a 45 millimeter, it only focuses down to uh, five feet. Four feet, that's respectable. Uh, it's not great, but it's not awful. See this one is damped enough where you can put it somewhere and focus and you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Uh, this is a Nikon Lens Series E. It's uh, 75 to 150. Uh, it's a 3.5. These both being f4. This one's 3.5. It only has full f-stops. And it sort of has a rudimentary uh, depth of field scale, which I guess is helpful sometimes. This one has the most horriblest uh, 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 zoom creep. Where, see, you can't even hold it somewhere and focus without it fucking moving. But it's dirt cheap. This is a dirt cheap lens. Uh, it's about 100 bucks. Uh, it's got excellent optical uh, characteristics uh, on the crop sensor. It's beautiful. And then it's got to have an f-stop faster, so maybe you go a little light, uh, darker uh, um, lighting conditions. It's a nice lens. They say, oh, it's got this, it's got that. Well, the only bad thing is the zoom creep, really. Otherwise, uh, if you use it in cold weather, uh, it tightens up a little bit, so you can keep that in mind. Now there's other lens I'm going to get, so just hang on a minute. I'm walking away. I'm coming back. I don't want to have too many lenses on the table, but eh, I wasn't prepared, what could I say? There's this lens. This is a two-touch lens. It has a built-in uh, lens hood. Let's see. This is a Vivitar. Vivitar 70 to 153.5. Uh, close focusing zoom. Okay. Let's see. Well, this has a, a half f stops, but notice that uh, the indicator isn't lining up too good. It's screw mount. I bought this in 
excellent plus condition. The pass sticker doesn't even look uh, like it was used at all. With shipping and handling, it came to 50 bucks. And this is just as good as anything you see on this table. Uh, this is a 3.5. Let's put it next to the Nikon. Eh, it's about the same length. This feels, I don't know. They all feel about the same weight. But uh, I'll put some uh, links to the specs in the comment section and you can check it out. Let's see. Uh, this focuses natively down to five feet, which is meh, not so good. But then it has this thing. Close focus. Now, you notice this has like this uh, a yellow dot there. This has a yellow dot there. I guess that's the preferred focusing, right? But from here to there, you, you could uh, tweak it in by turning this dial. Now, this is a uh, two-touch, which means there's no zoom creep. Wherever you put this thing, it stays. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. It stays, and then you could go focus, right? No problem. Notice that the, the lens gets bigger and smaller. This is made by Chiron. Uh, there's a, but if you look at the serial number, some of them are made by Tokina, but this one is made by Chiron. Oh, guess what? <laughs> uh, this was made by Chiron. This isn't uh, uh, manufactured by freaking uh, uh, Nikon. They get, farmed it out to Chiron. And except for the zoom creep, uh, it's an excellent lens. Excellent lens. Um, these were made by Pentax. No doubt about it. Uh, lens hood, lens hood. No lens hood, no lens hood. Any one of these could be the only lens you need to get if you want a vintage lens. Or you got to go full manual, right? Everything's focus is manual. Setting the aperture is manual, which means setting your exposure is manual. If you don't mind doing that. But they all have nice, um, uh, sharp, color rendition, all that stuff. You know, for your snapshots shots and everything, you can't beat it. So, I can't believe that this is a 45 to 125, and it's like the biggest one out of all of them, and it only focuses down to 5 feet. But, you know, I guess they made a compromise. They had to make a compromise. I think this is the most uh, advanced one, even though I think it might be... The, these are all from the late 70s to the mid 80s. That's how old they are. Uh, and uh, I like this one the best. Because, oh, there's only one thing. Now, this is a two-touch, right? So here's your focusing, here's your zoom. But then they have this other grip here, which is exactly the same as this. Now, why don't they use a, a different sort of a rubber, ribbing? They could have had like a, a, a bigger nubbies on it or something. So when you're holding it on your camera up to your face, you can tell it's different. It's hard to tell it's different. It's a little bit uh, different width, but not enough. I think they should have had different ribbing. You know, like this straight ribbing without the cross hatch. And this way you could tell uh, that this isn't it. And that's the only confusing thing. Now, if you use it a lot and you get used to it, yeah, I guess, you know, you would know. It's not this one, it's this one. You know, but still, uh, I think that was a, uh, a from a well-executed lens and it's mechan mechanically excellent. Uh, that was a dumb mistake they should have made. Uh, I could see putting a rubber band on it or something just so to differentiate, you know, uh, uh, when you want to shoot quickly or, uh, you know, uh, not mess around too much. You know, you can tell this is the zoom and that's not. So, uh, this focuses down to four feet, so that's great. This one beats uh, this one and that one, actually, except this one has a, uh, uh, a, a close focus. Oh, this one focuses down to three and a half feet, less than three. It focuses down to less than one meter. So that's even better. Say when you're at... Uh, 150, I think this one uh, is good, even of its own. So, uh, let's face it, I say this all the time. These push poles or zooms in general, I'm either at 150 or at 175. So if you're at 75, no problem focusing. 150, no problem focusing. It's only when you're in uh, the middle. This one is pretty par focal, if I remember correctly. That if you focus at 150 and then you want to get a good focus, it pretty much stays there. You don't have to refocus. Um, I can't really say that on these. Uh, but this one does stay reasonably close. So you could stick it somewhere in the middle and find focus it. Same with this one. Uh, 
And of course, two, two touch doesn't have that problem at all. And so, if you want to use a, a wide range to, to you know tweak in your field of view or your image scale, uh, there's two touch is the way to go. And uh, both these lenses were made by Chiron. And they're really, really good. And this one was dirt cheap. Out of the batch, uh, I, I think these come in other mounts. They definitely come in other mounts. You could probably get a Nikon mount. You could probably get an FD mount. Probably get it in a K mount. Uh, so this is the best one to look like. But, you know, these are far and few between. There's a lot of garbage uh, uh, types. You know, used ones that are, like, beat up. And maybe they go for 10 or 12 bucks, and you're taking your chance with it. But if you could find an excellent, outstanding copy like this, look at that past sticker. Wow. This thing, maybe the guy used it once and never used it. I don't know. Maybe it was a show model and uh, uh, some camera store went out of business. I don't know. But uh, I'm glad I bought this. I love getting cheap lenses. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm stuck with these now. But, you know, uh, everyone's famous favorite boomer and vintage lens enthusiast is buying these lenses and reviewing them so you don't have to but the bottom line is is that these vintage lenses any one of them is outstanding for the price a hundred bucks excellent condition really nice optics you can get used to them uh, uh, so if I use them all, I get confused because this one acts this way, this one acts that way, etc., etc. But if you just buy one because you want to get a vintage lens, you get used to it, and then uh, you know, then you're used to it. Now, uh, what is this? 75 to 152 x 75 to 152 x 75 to 152 x 45 to 125. That's like 2.8 x zoom ratio. Now, I have these old beast here. Here's a Sigma, piece of shit Sigma, compact uh, hyper zoom, 28 to 200. Well, yeah, it's compact when you're in a 28, but then it does this, and it was a piece of crap. I had troubles with it, and it, it, it was optically good, but it was hard to get a perfect focus out of it. I uh, saw so when the optics are good, they're mechanically shitty. When the mechanics are perfect and they're optically shitty. That's the way Sigma rolls. Oh, I'm sorry I bought this lens. The Nikon. AFS Nikkor 18-300. 3.5-6.3G EDVR. Uh, uh, this thing sucks. Oh, man. It's uh, totally useless. It's too much of a zoom. 18-300. That's 10x, 11x, 12x, something like that. Well... You know, it's not worth it. Oh, it's got VR. I'm not even sure it worked at all. Uh, <laughs> so it's on my, uh, it's on the, uh, the table of shame. <laughs> so those are a couple of lenses you can stay away from. Uh, and this is big box. Oh my God. I bought this a uh, long time ago. I'd say it was more modern. Uh, I think I paid like maybe 150 bucks for it, but uh, you know, uh, as AF and all that stuff, but still, uh, it just didn't work right. So, but these are my permanent collection of usable lenses. Any one of these, right here, Pentax, Pentax, Canon, Chiron, uh, Nikon, Chiron, or Vivitor, Chiron. Now, you know, uh, uh, I seen a lot of Vivitar lenses when they went to Korea. And I don't want to knock Korea, but <laughs> Japan was the best. Uh, that's just been my opinion. And they, Vivitar has a lot of dogs, without a doubt, because they had a lot of other companies make them. They farmed everything out. They didn't have their own facilities. And some people did a good job, and some people did a crappy job. Well, this is a really good one. Really good one. And that's just the way it rolls out. Uh, I'm not going to have any uh, photo uh, slide shoot after this one. This is just a philosophizing of, uh, you know, uh, lenses, and uh, 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 just to let you know that uh, uh, everyone's favorite boomer and vintage lens enthusiast can recommend any of these four lenses, without a doubt, without a doubt, anyone, for their optical characteristics, uh, their mechanical build, uh, but of course, uh, this one is notorious for zoom creep, and that, that's about it. Uh, the Nikon. So, uh, 
there'll be uh, more uh, coming soon, so stay tuned.